How to Sing You Should Be Dancing by the Bee Gees. Hey gang, Ken Tamplin from Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm going to teach you how to sing You Should Be Dancing, and the reason I think this is interesting is because the Bee Gees developed a very unique style of singing. If you listen to their stuff really early on, uh, they didn't sing in a lot of falsetto like they did later on, but they developed such a cool style that it was cool and it stuck. Now, that isn't to say that there weren't guys like Marvin Gaye and Al Green and other people out there using a lot of reinforced falsetto in a similar kind of sound and it doesn't mean also that guys like Rob Halford later came and used a similar kind of tone with a lot of distortion uh, to sing in a heavy metal kind of tone with a similar timbre of the Bee Gees. I kid you not, straight up, if you listen, you know, instead of, hey, you know, yeah. You know, it's not far removed from a Bee Gees sound to a Halford sound by adding some distortion in the sound and how we get to this place. So I use this as a template by which I teach head voice to get people to understand head voice to match the tonal qualities from your head voice of your chest voice. So how you can go in and out from chest, mixed voice, head voice, and back, and make it sound like one long powerful note. But we're gonna stick with the Bee Gees. Now, I wanna go ahead, I did a version of this, a shortened version of this. I'm gonna play it for you, and I'm gonna use this as the template by which I teach you how to do it. And then I'm gonna put it in the description so you can see, click on it, the whole version of it, and see how I did. Um, but they didn't only use uh, reinforced falsetto, they layered a lot of it uh, to where it sounded really thick and fat. So if you only have one single voice doing it, it doesn't sound as beefy and powerful as if multi-layered tracks of the way they did it. So you're going to hear this as multi-layered and then I'm going to do it individually to hear how they got there. And all I did was sing it like three or four times to get that effect to, to reduplicate exactly what they did. But they also used some chest resonant sound. So Barry, you know, was more of the chesty guy and Andy and the others sang more of the falsetto stuff. But let's just dive right in. Here we go. Uh, this is You Should Be Dancing. gonna stop there so my baby moves at midnight comes right up to the dawn my woman takes me high my woman keeps me warm okay that's the lower part now I want to show you something I'm gonna add some effects to this real quick and I want you to see how much the effects make a difference. I'm gonna overdo it a little bit because they kinda of did it and it, when it's seated in the track, you can't tell how much effect is really being used, but I trust me, they're using a lot and they're quadrupling the track to make it sound really thick. Check this out though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go, there we go, there we go. 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 My baby moves at midnight, comes right up to the dawn. My woman takes me high. My woman keeps me warm. What you doing in your back? What you doing in your back? Yeah, you should be dancing. Yeah, dancing. Yeah. I read it. Yeah. That's what I meant to do. Sorry. That's what I meant to do. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. One sec. There we go. Yeah, is what I meant to do. Okay, so um, as we're going through this, you can see it sounds just like the Bee Gees, right? Or pretty close, I kinda hope so. Um, because I worked at reinforcing my falsetto. Now, why is this important? It's important because when we manage and build this head tone, okay? And I cover all of this in my singing course. This is so important for you guys that wanna sing high or even sing R&B because a lot of the R&B stuff is this exact sound with a little more air. You know, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, right? Hey, yeah. Right, you could just add more brightness of timbre in the sound and get to a brighter tone and that brighter tone actually matches the tonal quality of your chest voice. It's where you can sing in these big ranges and you don't have to pull up chest voice into a sound. Hey, you know, you can like bring a lot of strength into the sound once you cross the threshold of Segunda Passaggio, your second passageway. Fancy words, if you guys don't know, it's it's the, the called the passageway or Passaggio, second passageway from chest into head voice, what's also referred to as mixed voice. Watch. Ah, ah, 
Like you can add more strength in that sound and make people think you've got this crazy range of chest voice when you're really using your head voice to do your mother load work for you up top. Let's continue, here we go. By the way, on there, she's gypsy and she's trouble. He gives you a little bit more of that sexy, you know, air. He didn't go, she's gypsy and she's trouble. Right, it's, she, she went, she's gypsy and she's trouble. She gives it to me good. My woman takes me higher. And comes right down to my blood. Right, so he, you know, he manipulates back and forth between different timbres and the amount of air he uses for effect, okay? Let's continue, whoops. Okay, now, I could go on, but that's the gist of it. Now, you probably are saying right now, well, gee, Ken, I'm glad you could do it, but you really didn't show me how to do it. You're right, I quite didn't yet. So, what I want you to do is I want you to go into falsetto. Now, most people have a really hooty fluty falsetto. So it's, ha, 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 and I want you to kind of lean into it by cutting back the air. Don't over sing, don't over blow the chords with air. We're gonna, yeah, kind of fry into it, yeah. And you're gonna say, that sounds like throwing a cat through a hula hoop, like you're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding, like really do this. <laughs> Try to manipulate different vowel sounds. Right, and you're gonna get through these sounds. Now, by the way, when we work this up, again, I have a singing course, I'm gonna say it one more time. KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. You can find my singing course right here. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find a whole entire section, a whole volume on this of me showing you how to work up all these vowels to get this bright tone, and then you can add flavors or different percentages of air to get the desired effect of what you wanna sing. All right, so we're gonna start with Keep Right. Right? Now, a lot of people say, oh, it's like twang. It is a little bit like twang. Twang is E-H. Right? And people think twang is the holy grail on people, how you get to head voice. It's a starting point. It's not the holy grail. Twang is a starting point because it only uses E-H or et, like lead, okay? And that's really important because um, when you can't manipulate from one vowel to another, you get stuck in one sound and you can't jump or you can't migrate from one vowel to another. You can't morph from one vowel to the next. And that was brought by, uh, by Estelle Vo Vocal Method way back in the 70s where she developed a, a technique for people to get into their head voice and be nice and bright. And she called it twang and then the kind of rock world embraced it for yeah! you know, that kind of heavy screaming. And Rob Halford kind of embraced this sound, a lot of other people, you know, um, uh, you know, um, what's a, a good, killer, killer, yeah! You know, you, you have this kind of really bright tone on the sound. It's the same sound, just distorted with a little more power and a little bit more force in the throat after it's been grown and, and matured over time. But anyway, so do this with me. Yeah. And as you do this over time, and it might kind of tickle in the throat a little bit, you don't have to be loud on the sound. You won't get volume out of force. You'll get volume out of maturing this sound, maturating the sound over time with smaller tones. Yeah. Because it'll break. It'll break up and it won't be able to sustain the amount of air you're pushing across the chord. 
until it builds strength. And then the more strength that it builds, the more you can kind of push air and cut back that air by pulling your vocal folds tighter. And as though you pull these, pull these folds, you know, you can put, put, um, you know, bring it tighter. And then if you want to take it to the next level, turn the Bee Gees into, you know, You know, you can actually manipulate that sound into more of a metallic sound or other, you know, groups that you like that use this kind of sound. And it could be, man, it could be cool in the gang. You know, Woo you know a, a celebrate good time. You know, you can actually manipulate that in any style of music you want. Anyway, gang, thank you for joining me. Definitely stick around for my next video. Keep